was an incredible project. Um, I was lucky enough to get a, a scholarship to go to UTS to do a doctorate. And part of the, pro, the, part of the doctor, doctoral process was, um, you know, not just writing a thesis, it was uh, to produce a production piece. So I was kind of in a... Um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but then what happened was, very tragically, Peter was diagnosed with cancer and he couldn't travel with Rose Tattoo and they were heading off overseas again and he was kind of not feeling fantastic, you know, naturally. So I said, hey while you're getting your treatment, you know, while you're in recovery, why don't we, you know, do a series of interviews and start making a film about the story of Rose Tattoo? Because at that stage it had, it had kind of peaked again and they were playing in front of, you know, 80,000 fans at, at festivals and in stadiums and stuff all over Europe. So, and hundreds of thousands of fans. So... Um, it was quite a phenomenon, and I really hadn't had any experience of Rose Tattoo live before the 1990s. So as that wave crested of their second popularity, I kind of got a, an, a, an impression of how influential they were and how big they were back in the late 70s and the early 80s. And... I really wanted to kind of document that because while Rose Tattoo weren't, you know, the most popular band in the world, they were pretty much one of the most influential mm. bands of all time. Mm. And I wanted to kind of get that down um, on film and so and get Pete sort of give Peter space to talk about his mm. life and his his incredible inspirational work. So that's that's how it happened. That's how it started. And then, um, you know, as those interviews progressed, it was just a logical kind of sequence of events to speak to Ian Ryland and Mick Cox and Geordie and, you know, Kingy and Angry. Mm. Yeah, so I ended up speaking to all of them and um, putting that together as a, a documentary called Rock and Roll Outlaw. But, you know, I think when I saw it, there was someone had come in from the States and they'd financed the showing of it that night at the Bullface Stag. Is there some sort of licensing issue with it with the music? Aha. Well, <laughs> there, here's the interesting thread to all this, is that the person that bankrolled that screening mm. was the same guy that put the money up for Bitsa. Right. Ah. Roger Franklin. Okay. Um, and... He's a big fan, mm. and he, um, yeah, really helped me out because there are licensing issues um, with the film. The publishing rights are owned by Albert's Music, and they want a shitload um, of money before I can own it mm. and screen it and sell it commercially. So mm. I'm, I've never been able to get anybody to put that much money up. Mm. Mm. So... Uh, it's there and it hasn't gone away mm. and maybe one day when Angry's the Prime Minister <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 